Hello. Sorry. I was reading. <laughs> uh, this lecture is going to be about nominations and campaigns. I've taken some cold medicine, so hopefully I'll sound better uh, for this one. All right. So nomination is an official endorsement of a candidate for office by a political party. Generally, success requires momentum in the polls, money, and a lot of media attention. Um, campaign strategy, there are two stages to that. It's the master plan by, that candidates lay out to guide their electoral campaign. So the first stage starts between the declaration of a candidacy and the nomination at the um, for president at the nominating convention by their party. The second stage is between the nomination and election night. Um, so step one, deciding to run. Campaigns are physically and emotionally taxing. I'm sure that you all remember last year when Hillary Clinton was at an event for 9-11 and she collapsed because she had pneumonia and then the media had a field day talking about how she had a stroke and was unfit for the presidency. It's hard, guys. Campaigning is hard. And, you know, most people that campaign are in their late 60s, early 70s for president. I mean, Obama's kind of an anomaly. People tend to be older. Um, I don't know. We just like to elect old people. I don't know. Um, other countries have short campaigns, generally less than two months. In the United States, they can last, especially for president, 18 months or more, um, just because there's such a media interest uh, and circus that tends to surround it. Um, other countries, though, have limits on the amount of campaigns, ca campaigning that can happen, which limits the amount of money spent on campaigns and, uh, I don't know, uh, doesn't tire out the voting population nearly so much. All right, but in the U.S., after you throw your hat into the ring, stage one begins, you get a campaign manager, you get a fundraiser, you get counsel, you hire media and campaign consultants, you assemble staff, you plan the logistics, you get research staff and policy advisors and pollsters to work for you. You get a good press secretary. Um, what's her name? Uh, Kellyanne Conway was working for uh, Ted Cruz last year before she switch sides and went over to Donald Trump after he won the nomination. Um, <clears throat> you establish a website. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm gross. Um, Hillary Clinton actually and, and Barack Obama had very, very well organized, beautiful websites. Um, the Republicans are catching up, but they've got a lot of work to do in the internet realm. Um, but we'll come back to that later. This is your first flipped assignment. There is a like one page article from ABC CLIO um, about how we used to elect people uh, for the nominating process for president and how that changed after the 1968 Democratic National Convention. So read through that and then answer this question. Is the system we have now more or less democratic than it was before the 1968 DNC? Why or why not? All right. So. Step two of campaigning is competing for delegates. Um, remember the primaries and caucuses? That's how you get delegates um, for your, your presidential bid. Uh, and if you don't remember how primaries and caucuses work, go back and watch the video that I attached in the last lecture. The purpose of step two is to get delegates for the National Party Convention. And then step three, the convention send-off. Um, the convention at one point in our history provided a lot of great TV drama, but now it's a basic formality, which means it gets less TV time. Now, that doesn't mean that the Democratic and Republican parties don't try to make it a big TV spectacle. Katy Perry was at um, uh, Hillary Clinton's this past year when Mitt Romney was being elected. They had a, was it Clint Eastwood, who gave a very fiery speech to an empty chair while he was pretending that it was Obama. It was all the rage. Um, so they do try to do things to make it more TV spectacle-y, but it, the popularity of them has worn off over the past few election cycles. Um, they're still very important to get the party organized and motivated. Uh, you remember all the balloon drops and all the memes about Bill Clinton from the last one? It's like a political pep rally. Um, the main thing that the convention does, other than just like being a big show where you like honor the new nominee for the general election, is that this is where the party platform for the next four years is formed. 
uh, the platform is the statement of its goals and policies and general beliefs. You can think of a platform as being the thing that the party stands on. Each platform is made up of individual planks, and those planks would be individual goals or policies or beliefs. And then, of course, they have the official nominations and candidate speeches and things like that. Um, step four, the general election campaign. After the convention, oh wait, hold on, I'm going to go back here real quick. I just thought of something. <laughs> uh, every time that the party platform is redone, uh, the news goes a little bit crazy. Um, something that I read on, I think it was CNN in 2012, after the two parties formed their their new platforms, um, after the nomination of Mitt Romney and Barack Obama, um, the Democrats were getting a lot of flack because they mentioned God, I think, twice in their platform. Um, and <laughs> likewise, on, on um, news uh, sources like MSNBC, the Republicans were getting a lot of flack because I think they mentioned God like 23 times. <sighs> it's fun. Fun stuff. <laughs> All right, so general election campaign. After the convention, you hire more staff, you raise more money, you advertise more, you campaign more, you do more, 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 which is honestly probably what happened to Hillary Clinton at the 9-11 the thing. I mean, it was just, there's a lot of stuff going on. <clears throat> um, let's see. There we go. So campaigning stage two. After the nominating convention, you have the work up to the general election. So after the nominating convention, um, presidential candidates are supposed to choose a VP. The VP is supposed to balance the ticket. Everyone kind of expected um, Donald Trump this past election season to go with Chris Christie because he had been really loyal. Um, he was the first Republican to break off from his own uh, presidential bid and just throw his support behind uh, Trump. Um, probably what happened was that the larger Republican establishment convinced him not to go with um, Chris Christie because Chris Christie was having that uh, Bridgegate scandal and there are a few other things. So um, usually you want to find someone that balances your ticket. So the clearest example of this was in the 2008 election um, when the Republicans were getting a lot of flack for not being super diverse. And so John McCain, a very moderate uh, Republican candidate chose Sarah Palin in an effort to win over some some female votes, um, and Barack Obama, young, diverse, um, relatively unknown candidate, goes with a well-established, well-respected vice presidential pick in in Joe Biden. Advertising uh, after the general election, this is when advertising really kicks it up a notch. In class, I'm going to have you guys do an assignment where you look at the Living Room Candidate website and compare different ads. Eisenhower has some crazy ones, um, but yeah, so that's a big part of of step two uh, of your campaign. And then there's the debates. No third parties are allowed in debates, um, and. <sighs> Ever since the first televised debate between JFK and Nixon, um, <laughs> we've seen an increase in the statistically more attractive candidate winning, um, but debate skills are very important. There are a couple of video clips that I'll show you all in class demonstrating debate strategies outlined by people like Bill Clinton and, and JFK, um, and we might even look at some of Donald Trump's. All right, so raising money, super important. Uh, all of the money that is raised hypothetically has to be reported to the FEC, the Federal Election Commission. The Presidential Election Campaign Fund um, is a fund that, um, it's, it's, the, it's the public funding option. That's money that's donated by taxpayers on their annual income tax return. One of the first questions you answer, by the way, when you fill out your taxes is, do you want to donate money to, it's $3, I think now, um, to the, the public fin financing of, of campaigns. Uh, you can click yes or no, and you can select which party you prefer it to go to, or if you don't care, you can just send it wherever. Um, this began in 1973, and it started as a dollar. Now it's up to three again. The government takes $3 from you, um, from your tax returns. And it doesn't affect your taxes at all. It's, it's just $3, but it's, so $3 are taken out of your 
um, taxable income. So it doesn't affect like how much you get back or anything like that. But it does help to fund, or at least was helping to fund, um, presidential campaigns. Um, the other day I gave you all a history of campaign finance handout in class. If you would look over that and then just summarize these uh, as your flip to number two assignment. And then lastly, what are your thoughts on campaign finance reform? Should it be a thing? Why or why not? Why might people disagree with you? Do you think we need to find it, can't reform campaign finance? Good grief. Why or why not? And why might people disagree with you? I think that's it. It is. All right. I'll see you all tomorrow.